Hedley, Hedley, folks. I don't have a bell, so that doesn't work. Anyway, so let's go on to St. George's Day, or St. George Floyd, or whatever the hell else we're going to name it now. I do like the idea of being St. George, actually. It just sounds better now that I think about it. But let's go to the uh, segment itself, which is, of course, we're recording this on a Thursday morning, but it was uh, St. George Day on Wednesday, <laughs> in which we celebrate and remember the uh, killing of uh, the dragon, uh, it's, I don't know. It's uh, it's St. George Floyd's Day, which the Americans are now making some kind of national holiday in their own, you know, de facto lives, or at least leftist Americans are. So they decided to go on a big spree of saying, oh, what's changed? And so I, what what are they actually doing on, on this day? Are they celebrating his his death? Like Depends, among, depends who it is. <laughs> I mean, marking his death with some kind of holiday and celebration seems a little bit it's tasteful even for for them, doesn't it? Well, there's there's two camps of leftists. So if we uh, if we go to the first link, we can see the first camp of leftists who they're deciding for his holiday to sit around and contemplate about what has changed. And uh, as you have the article here from Bezos Media saying two years after Floyd's death, black Minnesotans say little has changed. I don't know. I'd say a lot has changed, frankly. We're we'll checking it out. And uh, if we go to the next one here, we have of course the remembrance as well. The first meme being, why not just use a real twenty dollar bill and then no one will remember your name. And if we go to the next image, we have in fact, yes, of course, uh, people do remember his name for the twenty dollar bill and the uh, shenanigans afterwards. And if we go to the next link here, we have a, a For Forbes article just saying two years after George Floyd, black leaders reflect on the change. And this is where we get to the second camp of leftists, who are kind of just like. Well, I really miss him. I really do. It's been fantastic, frankly. <laughs> All the millionaires and billionaires. Oh, yeah. Well, they've probably made a lot of money virtue signaling off of, oh, it's it's such a tragedy. Oh, he was he was murdered by police. Yes. I mean, and I did so Officer Fentanyl. <laughs> So if you uh, if you do like a, just a quick scroll, John, or like if you just like scrib through it because it's just I want to demonstrate like really quick. Don't don't bother going slow. That's pretty. It's still slow. <laughs> it's just like they have the fact that just there's loads of different losers and uh, they're all millionaires and just talking about the fact that oh yeah it was horrible the fact that this all happened and I've made loads of money and that's terrible as well and of course it's a Forbes article what did you expect so you have that if we go to the next one here we have the fact that we have uh, Jabba the Marxist herself who made all her buckaroos. Of course, that's something else that changed. Her and her mansions. I thought we'd just include the clips again to demonstrate what has really changed. She looks very happy, doesn't she? Yeah, basically. It's almost like she's made a lot of money. One of the things that changed, a bunch of lesbians, specifically one of them, and her wife, <laughs> made uh, millions and millions of buckaroos. Let's play. I'm so glad to have the both of you here and in person. Yes! It's been a really intense year and a half. That was a nice way to talk about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> And I look up to the both of you so much. You know, you're big sisters to me, your movement leaders, your gangsters. Your <laughs> Portal open, yes. right? And how the whole community had to rush in yep. yeah. to save D, yep. right? Yeah. To save our black future, yep. Yep. right? Like that's <clears throat> what was happening, but it wasn't Hippolyta, it's yeah. George <laughs> Floyd's spirit. Even lazily oh, doing it as well. Remember we used to pretend like we weren't, had to pretend <laughs> like we weren't. <laughs> Defund the police, <laughs> this is a budget issue. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yes. And like now we, we are out. talking about <laughs> abolition. <laughs> yeah, we kind of just mean abolition. <laughs> I'm never going to not stop playing that clip. Because I'm laughing about it as well. It just... <laughs> oh, we got away with it. Oh dear. Well, yeah. to be fair, I kind of commend them for, for grifting the, the Black Lives Matter money because what they did is effectively new to that political movement entirely just by being greedy and selfish. Yes. I, it has been uh, beautiful to see. I can mm -hmm. see all the, the activists within the organizations, like local branches, all mm -hmm. being like, wait, we were conned? And I was like, yes, yes, it was always a con. Always <laughs> has been. <laughs> it's, it's that. So there we have, we have two lesbians who made a lot of money out of that. And uh, that's one thing that's changed. So two blacks made uh, uh, better off after mm -hmm. George Floyd and his heroic sacrifice. Well, it was called Black Lives Matter. We just didn't know which Black Lives Mattered, and apparently it's those two black lesbians. Certainly. And uh, though we have the fact, I mentioned the heroic sacrifice, because I wanted to go back to this as well, which is uh, another person who did quite well out of George Floyd, which is uh, politicians. And we have the best example, obviously, being Nancy Pelosi, who decided to thank George Floyd for sacrificing his life for our sins or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. Let's, let's play. We saw it happen. And thank God the jury validated what we saw, what we saw. So again, thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. 
for being there to call out to your mom. How, how heartbreaking was that? Call out for your mom. I can't breathe. But because of you and because of thousands, millions of people around the world who came out for justice, your name will always be synonymous with justice. Why is that say? <laughs> I mean, even from a lef leftist perspective, surely the fact his this name is... is synonymous with injustice. That doesn't even make sense <laughs> from their own narrative. It doesn't make any sense. Is Nancy <laughs> Pelosi <laughs> saying that Chauvin delivered justice there? <laughs> I think yeah, that's the, what she said. The fentanyl delivered the justice <laughs> to uh, St. George and his life. I mean, it is so tone deaf. I mean, even as you say from a leftist perspective, there's no rectifying any part of that statement. <laughs> I mean, it is just garbage in its entirety. But probably the most revealing moment of the entire thing, which is, yeah, this is all about us, the politicians. It's about us gaining power. That's all we ever think about, which is why I will go out and say at a press conference, he died for us. Yeah, he did for you <laughs> and nothing else, apparently because that's all you see it as. But then there's also some other people who did very well. Some other things have changed. Some politicians have got more power out of it. Uh, some lesbians made some quick cash. There's also some other people who made some quick cash, and they're selling his biography. George Floyd's biography being sold here on PBS. Why? Just why? <laughs> who was asking for this? Frankly, to be fair, it could be really interesting. To, it just paints him as a massive degenerate. <laughs> If if they were doing this to to do as a historical record, yeah, but the people doing this are not. They're doing it to make money off. He leftists. heroically ate fentanyl in his last hours. <laughs> For politicians, oh. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's ridiculous. But we'll play a clip from it. This interview, which is again just revealing how just shallow these people seem to be. This is one of the authors, and uh, he decided to go off and say that well, if it wasn't for America, George Floyd could have been a Supreme Court justice. <laughs> but you know. America keeps down black people from becoming Supreme Court justices. Don't fact check me. <laughs> Let's play. All these institutions, all these different systems, from the land loss that started with his ancestors at the, from long before he was born, to the struggling, crumbling education system and poor housing system, to a criminal justice system that was hyper-aggressive in terms of treating a person and looking for a person like George Floyd to incarcerate. Uh, and his life had been shaped by all these institutional forces, and many times those forces hindered his ambition to strive and become something in the world. Uh, we talked to his second grade teacher and found out that he had a lot of ambitions as a young kid, and he actually was a relatively smart uh, eight-year-old. He was someone who <laughs> wrote an, an essay about wanting to be a Supreme Court Down justice. Hill from and we talk uh, to his students in high school that were with him uh, when he got to high school and we saw that that smart kid that was a second grader and had all of these ambitions had, had been funneled through a number of segregated underfunded schools in Houston's third ward and by the time he gets to high school he has been told you're not going to be able to make anything of yourself by going to school you should focus on your sports uh, athletics career and try to make it that way I, 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 what, what delusion are these people under? That he was basically peaking at eight. And uh, at that point, he was on a trajectory to become a Supreme Court justice. But damn underfunded schools, damn neighborhoods being distorted by American history. And therefore, well, he ended up dead from, well, who knows? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to, to argue that he was told that he couldn't succeed because of racism. I mean, I was told that I probably wouldn't make a good physicist. And I mean, they were right. But it's, but it's also just like, yeah, he was basically going to be a Supreme Court justice if it wasn't for the damn underfunded schools and America keeping a brother down because, you know, there's no black person that's ever made a Supreme Court ever <laughs> in all of human history. <laughs> don't, don't fact check that. <laughs> because, again, it's just it's just so transparent. Again, the picture they want to pay of just like, basically, America's evil. That That's the book. That's the book they wanted to make. They're just using him as a vehicle to do it, evidently by their own words. Because the idea that he would have been something if it wasn't for the United States giving him the fentanyl, and then give it, no, it's just it's embarrassing to say the least. If we get to the next link here, we have this link to the Los Angeles Times, who try and give credence to this, and they have uh, an article looking at the many chapters marked by racism in the the George Floyd family's history. They give us this rhetoric about the fact that um, Floyd's great grandfather was a slave, and then became one of the wealthiest landowners in North Carolina in his life life. So he started, he became free at eight years old. 
And this is... Uh, what, he's an eight-year-old slave master? <laughs> <laughs> well, he became a, a, a free at eight and then presumably mm-hmm. had uh, people working for money, so not for slaves instead. But then the question you've got to ask, okay, for what kind of man can do that in Confederate South state goes from slave to biggest landowner? Well, he's got to be smart. He's got to know what he's doing. He's got to be, you know, entrepreneurial and actually, you know, quite an upstanding guy. And uh, then they say, in black and white family photos, Stuart poses with his wife in front of China, cabinet full of crockery, wearing a dress shirt and suspenders. But the couple couldn't read or write. White farmers settled their land. They were powerless to fight back. It was stolen from them, Harrelson said. And they don't give us any details about how this land was stolen, how the white people turned up and settled it in whatever happened to George Floyd's great-grandfather. Fan- well, I imagine that if they were illiterate, they're not going to have any any understanding of the legal um, backing to own land. Like, if, if land is unclaimed, someone can claim it, and then they, they like go through the legal process of then legally being the claimant of that land. But then how is he a landowner? Well... I mean, it just doesn't make any sense that this was unclaimed land that white people took because he hadn't written it down because he couldn't read or write or something. Like, mm-hmm. no, you say he was one of the wealthiest landowners in North Carolina in the Southern Confederate state there, and uh, yet it just disappears, just goes. They don't give us any details. I don't know who's stupid enough to just believe this. It's just, oh, well, that, that makes sense. Perfectly. It would be nice for some evidence. Yeah, instead they provide nothing. And if we go to the next one here, we have uh, Candace Owens, who is actually, well, doing some work instead. Instead of just writing a, a Golden Boy piece, she's gone and interviewed Derek Chauvin's mother and also people who knew George Floyd and is making a documentary about that. So I'm to be honest, I'm just looking forward to that because it looks like someone actually trying to find truth instead of just being like, I'm just going to make a propaganda piece, mm-hmm. frankly, as you see from the biographers or the rich lesbians. Because the next one as well, I also thought we'd uh, look at the fact that the Washington Post decided to put this out. George Floyd was shot and killed in police custody. Oh, yeah. I don't remember that part. <laughs> the fentanyl grabbed a gun. <laughs> uh, the knee grabbed a gun. I, I, neither of the rhetorics, neither of the tales about what happened, neither of the sides of the court case mention a gun ever or a bullet. I, I mean, is this like I've been shot through the heart? I mean, is it is it rhetoric like fentanyl <laughs> shot him through the heart and then he's he's gone or something? This this is obviously just the level of journalism you get from the Bezos media, which is we don't know what happened in the slightest. But then again, no one does on the left because remember we covered the trial mm-hmm. in well, kind of ridiculous Ex- detail. Yes, it was somewhat excruciating, wasn't it? But it had to be done because literally no one else was doing it in the sense of the like the main, even the mainstream right in this country had no idea what was going on. I remember mm-hmm. Julie Hartley Brewer saying on the radio as we were driving in, ah, oh, the the the. the the prosecution, the defense is making this argument that he died of drugs or something? I don't know. It's just like, Julia, like, it's a pretty simple case. Like He's on a ridiculous amount of fentanyl. Three times the lethal amount. There were pills with fentanyl when his saliva found in the cop car. So obviously he downed his stash before he was arrested and then passes out in a long, drawn-out sequence, the kind of which can be found in someone overdosing on fentanyl. I mean, that, that's the defense's argument. It's, there it has it. It's, it's very simple. But the, the idea now is he was shot and killed by in police custody. I mean, there's just no attention was ever paid to that court case, really, was it? And if we go to the next one, we have the fact that it's not just they tweeted it, so the social media manager didn't catch it, uh, Bezos Media, but also the guy posting on their website didn't catch it either. And it's been archived, so we know, it, yeah, this is 100% true. They did really put out that George Floyd was shot and killed by, poli- in, by in police custody. If we go to the last one here, there's uh, you got them. So the media are grifting, you've got the lesbians who are grifting at BLM, you got the guys selling books who are grifting. Uh, well, no one grifted as hard, frankly, in the politician sense. Nancy Pelosi did well, but Barack Obama yesterday decided to put this out. As we grieve for the children of the kids who were killed in the mass shooting recently, we should take time to recognize that two years off have passed since the murder of George Floyd under the knee of a police officer. Why? Why, why Why? should we take time to recognize George Floyd Day in response to a mass shooting? I I just, I, I mean, it's, it's more tone deaf than even Nancy Pelosi saying he died for our sins. It's just like, well, <laughs> yeah, there is this, uh, this mass shooting that's taken place. But George Floyd, I mean, I so put in, his killing stays with us all to this day, especially with those who loved him and also the families of the kids who were killed. I'm sure we'll be recognizing, t- putting their kids aside for a moment to recognize George Floyd and his national holiday we all have to live with now, apparently. I, I, I mean, it's, it's not really funny, <laughs> it's, but it is just depressing that there you have it. There's, there's St. Uh, Floyd Day, as I'm just going to carry on calling it, and uh, the man who died for our sins. 
And what has changed? Well, some black lesbians got a load of money, some politicians grifted super hard to get power, and uh, some guy sell a biography to say that he did nothing. Plenty of shops burnt down as well. Yeah, that's that. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the Contemplation series, this one between Thomas and Josh on what is wrong with Western philosophy. And if you want to follow Josh, you can follow him on Getter at at Josh underscore firm on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.